uh, this first chemical right here on the left on this sheet is a formula for ethanol. Okay? This also happens to be a formula for ethanol. Okay? It's just written two different ways. Can you see the relationship between the two formulas? What's the what Jose, what's the what's the similarity between the two two formulas? Huh? I couldn't hear you. Okay, yeah, you added the, the number of hydrogens, 3, 2, and 1, together to get 6. Okay, we add the carbons together, 1 and 1, to get 2, and there's only one oxygen. So it's just written in a different way. Okay, both of these are formulas for ethanol. Um, formulas for ethanol. Now, um, and we'll find out more about this when we get when we discuss formulas more fully in a later unit. But for right now, I'm just going to let you know this is what's called a condensed structural formula. It's telling you how the atoms are put together. This is called a, a this is called a condensed structural formula. It's telling you how the atoms are put together, how they're arranged. This one doesn't. Okay, so this is a simple chemical formula, and this is a structural chemical formula, but it's the one that we, this is the type of structural formula that we call a condensed structural formula, okay? Like condensed milk, y'all heard of that before? No? Really? Condensed milk, go, when you go to the grocery store, look for canned milk. There's evaporated milk and there's condensed milk, okay? So it comes in cans. And one of the things we're going to be doing in this unit is making ice cream. Maybe. Depends on you. Um, so you need to know about evaporated milk anyway. Okay. <laughs> they're not much difference, but they, they're just the way they make them. Okay. All right. So whenever, whenever to get that reaction you saw in the whoosh, that's called a whoosh bottle if you want to know. W-H-O-O-S-H, -O -O -S a whoosh bottle. To get that reaction in the whoosh bottle, I took some ethanol. 20, how much did I put in there? 20.3 milliliters. And I reacted with oxygen. Now, where did the oxygen come from? Atmosphere. Okay. Your atmosphere is about, anybody know the tw percentage of oxygen in the atmosphere? Oh, God, you should know that, guys. Come on. 20% oxygen, 21% to be a little more accurate, I suppose. 70% nitrogen. Okay. You need to know that. That's stuff you need to know. Huh? And you're right, it's only 90%. There's also water vapor and carbon dioxide and a uh, tiny little bit of hydrogen in there, a tiny little bit of helium in there, a tiny, tiny little bit of helium. helium. Okay? All right. We react those together. Now, now, I had to put a match in there, so I had to get it started. Okay? So there was, this is a symbol that means change. It's the Greek letter delta, capital Greek letter delta. It means change, and it's often used to indicate that we added a spark, okay? So I could have also said spark here, okay? So that's what I added to it to get it started. I had to have an initial um, amount of energy to get this reaction started. Then once I started it, it went on. the rest of it went on its own, okay? Once I got it, some of the molecules going, doing this, it went on its own. And you recognize this already, right? Okay, and you recognize this already, correct? Yes? All right, so uh, we made carbon dioxide and water. And every combustion reaction, every combustion reaction, every combustion reaction that starts with carbons and hydrogens and oxygens, every combustion reaction that starts with carbons and hydrogens and oxygens will end up with these two chemicals over here carbon dioxide and water every time okay without exception now that assumes we have enough oxygen if you have too little oxygen it might produce carbon monoxide instead of carbon dioxide but we're not we're going to just assume every one of them works this way okay every chemical reaction that starts with carbons hydrogens and oxygens will produce carbon dioxide and water every combustion reaction so over the 
long Labor Day weekend, we had a fish fry at my house, and I've got a propane cooker to do fish. Okay, well, I'm just burning propane with oxygen. You ever seen a propane cooker? A propane grill? Okay, you ever seen that? Yes? And it makes a blue flame, right? But all you're doing is mixing the propane with oxygen, and you have to have a, an initial spark. you got to have a match to start it, right? Or some, some other kind of lighter. You might have one of those piezoelectric starters or something. All right, but that's, you always get CO2 in water. Now, the, the balance, the form, the, the, no, these numbers that go in front, these coefficients that go in front, those can change because of the number of atoms that are involved, okay? Whenever you um, have a chemical reaction, the number of atoms on the left have to equal the number of atoms on the right, or the equation is not balanced. So, are these balanced? Do you have the same number of carbons on both sides? Do you? I see one person saying yes. I see some other people like they don't know. Do we have the same number of carbons on both sides, Philip? How about hydrogens? How about oxygens? Okay. He did the math in his head, I guess. All right. You got six oxygens here, plus one is seven, four here, and three here. That's seven, right? All right. So we got them, we got them balanced out. There's something that this equation doesn't show you, and that's the amount of heat that we made. You, you know we made heat, right? If, we, if somebody were to go back and touch that bottle right now, we'd have heat. How do you know there was heat in that bottle? Well, the fire. Okay, that's a good one. What else told you there was heat in that bottle? Anything else? What inference can we make about there was the hot bottle was heated up? When I plugged it up, it, it squeezed in. And why did it squeeze in? Huh? No, the fire was already out. It wasn't trying to get oxygen. That you're right there about the evidence, but your inference about what that evidence means is incorrect. But that's a hey. There's nothing wrong with the inference. Scientists make incorrect inferences all the time, and the way that they correct them is talk about it with other people that know what they're talking about. Okay? So you're behaving like a scientist. Good for you. Give them a pat on the back, somebody. Zach, reach over and pat him on the back. Mm -hmm. All right, there you go. Okay? How, why did that bottle shrinking in tell us there was heat in that bottle? Or that the, 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 air, the, the molecules in the, in the bottle had been heated up? Really? What happens when you heat something up? Huh? They begin to move faster. And what does that do and if you had a balloon and you heated it up? What's it going to do? Huh? Before it explodes, what's it going to do? It's going to get bigger. So if you heat something up, generally speaking, it expands, right? Now, rubber bands are different, but most things expand when you heat them up. Okay? So when you cool it down, what happens? It shrinks. Okay? It's a reversible process. Okay? All right? So that reversible process is also very important that you understand. Every 99% uh, of all the reactions in nature are reversible. Your body wouldn't work if you didn't have reversible reactions. Okay? The fact that you can breathe, breathe in oxygen and expel CO2 is a reversible process. Okay? Your heme, from which we get the word hemoglobin, takes in oxygen where it's in, a, in, in greater concentration in your lungs, carries it down to your into your blood vessels where the carbon dioxide that's mixed in the blood is greater and cr creates a lower pH and that heme changes its shape and lets go of the oxygen and takes in the CO2 and then it gets transported back to the oxygen where there's a lot more oxygen and it exchanges oxygen for CO2. Okay? That's a reversible process. Very important stuff in chemistry, okay? Very important process in life. The universe wouldn't work the way it works if it weren't for reversible processes. Okay? They work in everything. Okay? So this is uh, that that heat exchange is a reversible process. So what did the shrinking of, or the sort of cru slightly crushing into that bottle tell you? Was it heating up or was it cooling down? Okay, so where did the heat come from to start with? The fire. That's the inference, okay? On inference, you, you can't see the heat exchange, but you can see evidence of heat exchange. So we heated it up and we liberated, 
we liberated all this heat from these molecules, from these bonds between these atoms. We turned them loose, you know? I heard a story the other day about somebody who liberated thousands of roaches. I don't know. I wish I, 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 I just came to my head. I wish I had that story to tell you about. I mean, they broke in somewhere and liberated all these roaches. Somebody bought a bunch of roaches from Amazon. Okay? Huh? I don't know. It's something they were doing on their farm. I don't know. Maybe roach droppings are good for growing stuff. I don't have a clue. Anyway, we liberated the energy that was trapped in these bonds between these molecules. Okay? And that heat was given off into the inside of that bottle. When I seal it up, then the heat went where? If it cools down, the heat has to go somewhere. Where'd it go? Ow. You're giving out heat right now. Or you'd be dead. Only dead people don't give off heat. Okay? Why, why do I know that? Because you are a... A person. Okay, that's true. Okay? There are warm-blooded and cold-blooded animals, right? Which one are you? Warm-blooded. So you're giving off heat, all right? You're an exothermic being. You're giving off heat. All right, so we give off heat, and the heat was given off to the molecules inside that bottle, and then once the bottle, uh, once I sealed it up, we can see evidence the heat was then transferring where? Out of the bottle to... The, the air around it, everywhere else. Okay, you can think of that bottle as the system and outside that bottle as the surrounding. Okay? We're going to think of it as, in a little bit more complete chemical way later on. All right, now, back to this. You with me so far? Am I leaving your head spinning so far? Okay, good. What's missing from this, then, is where did the heat go? Okay? So we could write this equation with the heat. Okay? Now, what this means is here is that inside those bonds in these molecules, if I had a mole of ethanol, how much is a mole? Huh? One. Well, how many molecules in a mole? A lot. 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd ethanol molecules in one mole. Yes. Sure. Okay. It's a big number. If we had that many marshmallows, they would cover the earth 12 miles high. It's a lot of molecules. Okay. How many molecules of, do we have inside that bottle? Hmm. Well, let's see. That was 95% ethanol. This is kind of a shorthand way of writing ethanol. Okay. And I put about 20 milliliters at 20.3, right? That means that I have 93% of that 20.3. That's rough numbers. That's not really, really, really accurate. We could do some more heavy or heavy, heavy in math. We could figure out how much it is. How many have a calculator? You have your calculator? So how many moles, I mean, how many uh, milliliters of that ethanol was there in that graduated cylinder? 